Donald Trump's lawyer, Jenna Ellis, has pleaded guilty in Georgia election case, the latest to flip. I believe this makes, uh, what are we on, four or five uh, guilty pleas, four guilty pleas, which will break down. Jenna Ellis, the right wing attorney who worked for the Trump 2020 campaign, pleaded guilty to a criminal charge in the Georgia election case. It's a single charge, but it carries with it five years of probation. Oh, what an interesting, interesting development. Another domino falls, the knife in the back of Donald Trump. These people were oh so proud and so happy to stand firm in 2020 and say unequivocally that Donald Trump was the rightful winner. Jenna Ellis did very little. She was a lawyer. She was charged on two counts, one of which was Rico and one was soliciting a public official, I believe. I'll I'll get the specific charge um, pulled up in a second. But it was very little. Uh, In fact, she's being charged basically for just being Trump's lawyer at the time, which is not only, in my opinion, constitutionally protected, but a constitutional requirement. I'll say it. I don't think Trump was right. I think a lot of the stuff that they were arguing was wrong. And I've said this from the beginning. I believe that Democrats engaged in ballot harvesting changes to the uh, to the election rules. Often it was done through the executive branch and not the legislature, which is seemingly in violation of the Constitution, something of which was not ever adjudicated. But long story short, Joe Biden got more votes than Trump. And people seem to conflate that statement with the idea that more people wanted Joe Biden to be president. I never said that. In fact, quite the opposite. I said to Steve Bannon, Trump was anti-elected. There was no sentiment in favor of Joe Biden for the most part. I think enthusiasm for Biden was like 26 percent to Trump's like 92. But anti-Trump enthusiasm was through the roof. Why? Well, COVID happened. They took away sports, movies, video games, etc. I was the video games were still there to a certain degree, but certain events weren't. And uh, people got mad. They got mad. They were locked down and Trump was the president. They blamed him. They then mailed everybody a ballot and they went ballot harvesting. It's not that hard to understand. Now, you can argue a whole bunch of other things happened. I'm not saying they didn't. I'm saying that is the principal move that was made. Now, you have Trump's lawyers who are making arguments to defend him as he challenged the election. I believe it is the responsibility, nay, the obligation of any lawyer or any candidate who feels the election was unjust to challenge it, for that is what makes this country a government of, for, and by the people. For if we are a nation that imprisons individuals who seek a redress of grievances, then we are no longer a a, a constitutional republic with democratic institutions. We are no longer a government of, for, and by the people. And I think it's fair to say that we're at that point. Now, what can I say of Jenna Ellis and these others who have pleaded guilty? Oh, boy. Facing five or six years of probation, depending on the individual, I, I hope that within six months, they are found to be in violation of their probation and they get incarcerated because I want them to realize what they have done in kissing the pinky ring of corrupt individuals. Let me let me let me elaborate. It's not so much about them. I think they've shown their true colors in turning their back on this country and on Donald Trump for Jenna Ellis should have asserted in court. It was her constitutional obligation to act as a lawyer for a man who was seeking a redress of grievances, that she made no intentionally uh, incorrect statements, that she falsified nothing, and she simply acted as a lawyer as her duty dictates. Instead, she cried and said it's her fault. She regrets it. And oh boy, she'd never do it again. Well, okay. The message is clear. It is clear to any lawyer who would stand up on their First Amendment right to speak and seek a redress of grievances, that you will be crushed if you dare oppose the corruption in this country. And Jenna Ellis wants to assist these people. But you know what? You reap what you have sown. Now, I believe they'll probably let them do their thing. It's probably going to be unsupervised probation or something like this. But the reason why I say I hope they go to jail, understand a few things. Why are they doing this? One, as I already mentioned, they want to make sure any lawyer in the future knows the cost is too great for you to bear. And thus, no one's going to want to seek a redress of grievances. It is to put the boot on your neck. 
and they want to make sure everyone sees the tears streaking down Jenna Ellis's face. Now, if you were to have challenged this and stood firm and said this country mandates that we file the legal challenges that we deem we must to preserve this nation. Well, that's a terrifying thought. Someone standing up for the ideals of this country. No, no, no. They need Jenna Ellis to drop to her knees and kiss the pinky ring. I did say a lot of people were like, what does that mean? Kissing the pinky ring. Uh, have you ever seen The Godfather? All right. The mob boss holds up his ring and the man kisses it. He says, be my friend. And he kisses the pinky ring. It's also it's a general reference to uh, uh, acquiescing to uh, authority. Right. So um, another reference that I love is in the game Colonization. The king will insult you and say something like it's a video game about colonizing, you know, the Americas. The king will say your uh, awful behavior insults me. So I'm increasing your taxes. Kiss my ring. And you can kiss the king's ring or you can say screw off and you can dump everything in the ocean. Hey, hey, it's inspired by the Boston Tea Party. We will not acquiesce to your unjust demands. We will not kiss the pinky ring, good sir. But Jenna Ellis did. And so here's the issue. It's not so much that I really want anyone to suffer or go to jail, but Jenna Ellis has told the judge, you can imprison me if you deem. She has given up her rights, her fight. She has given up her moral obligations and any argument she could have. You guys seen Yellowstone in the show Yellowstone, uh, which apparently is getting canceled, unfortunately. There is this environmental activist who uh, assaults an officer or something, whatever. Spoiler alert. And uh, she's uh, she decides to take a plea agreement and she's warned not to do it. If you take this plea agreement, you give up everything. And so instead of fighting the charge with an advocate who is going to speak on her defense, she, the prosecutors say, look, we're going to give you a slap on the wrist. But if you're convicted, it's a decade in jail or something like that. So before this judge, who is absolutely looking to send, send, an, an, uh, send a message about these environmental protesters. I mean, look, she's an eco activist who attacked a cop, assaulted an officer. She works out with the prosecutors. They say, we're going to give you a slap on the wrist, probation. You're going to leave. Don't worry. You call us every few months. You're fine. Just we'll be done with this. She goes, OK. So in court, the judge says, my understanding, you'll be pleading guilty. And the recommend, sentencing recommendations in the agreement will be one year probation or something like that. And she goes, yes, your honor. He goes, OK, then do you plead guilty? How do you plead? And she goes, I plead guilty. And he goes, OK, the court accepts your plea. And now as judge, I reject the plea agreement. And with your guilty plea, I sentence you to 10 years of prison. And she's like, wait, what? No. Well, that's what you get. Now, look, in that case, it's a fictional story. And she's kind of like a bad person who attacked a cop. And she knew what she did was wrong. But it's funny because they have like Kevin Costner's character be like, what are you doing? You're locking her up. And he gets her out early or something like this. Jenna Ellis has just thrown herself at the mercy of the court, sacrificing the hundreds. of She, she raised hundreds of like 280 grand to fight back and say, no, I will not comply. And she drops to her knees and she gives up. Let me play for you the video. And then we'll talk about what this uh, what we have before us. So we have a uh, this clip of Sidney Powell. I really want to play that in a, in, in a, in a second. Uh, what they said. Oh, do I not have the video? I got to have the video pulled up. Here we go. Here we go. This is from uh, Ron Filipkowski says Jen Ellis reads a tearful statement in court after her guilty plea where she throws Rudy Giuliani under the bus and says she wished she had never gotten involved. OK, well, here you are, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Your Honor, for the opportunity to address the court. As an attorney who is also a Christian, I take my responsibilities as a lawyer very seriously, and I endeavor to be a person of sound moral and ethical character in all of my dealings. In the wake of the 2020 presidential election, I believed that challenging the results on behalf of President Trump should be pursued in a just and legal way. I endeavored to represent my client to the best of my ability. I relied on others, including lawyers with many more years of experience than I, to provide me with true and reliable information, especially since my role involved speaking to the media and to legislators in various states. What I did not do, but should have done, Your Honor, was to make sure that the facts the other lawyers alleged to be true were in fact true. In the frenetic pace of attempting to raise challenges to the election in several states, including Georgia, I failed to do my due diligence. 
I believe in and I value election integrity. If I knew then what I know now, I would have declined to represent Donald Trump in these post-election challenges. I look back on this whole experience with deep remorse. For those failures of mine, Your Honor, I have taken responsibility already before the Colorado Bar who censured me, and I now take responsibility before this court and apologize to the people. And apologize and apologize. And uh, and there it is. The betrayal of Donald Trump acquiescing and collapsing and giving in. Now, here's a clip from uh, Sidney Powell. Check this one out. This is stunning, heartbreaking, infuriating, and the most unpatriotic acts I can even imagine for people in this country to have participated in in any way, shape, or form. And I want the American public to know right now that we will not be intimidated. American patriots are fed up with the corruption from the local level to the highest level of our government. And we are going to take this country back. We are not going to be intimidated. We are not going to back down. We are going to clean this mess up now. President Trump won by a landslide. We are going to prove it. (laughs) And we are going to reclaim the United States of America for the people who vote for freedom. Sure. This is look. I don't think Trump won in a landslide. I think people misunderstand what it means to win. Uh, Since the beginning, I said Biden won. Why? He's in the White House. Trump didn't win. They got the votes. I don't care how you think they got the votes. The votes were there. The numbers exist. You can argue they're bad votes. You can argue whatever you want. The point is, in the greater scheme of things, I am not talking about an election. I am talking about a conflict between warring parties. Biden took the White House. That's that. That's winning. And now those who sought to aid Trump and assist him in their legal duties as lawyers, they are now being criminally charged. And you know what they're doing? They are sacrificing your future, your nation for themselves. For it takes a person of strong moral conviction to stand up and refuse to allow the corruption to spread to preserve this nation and its ideals. And for these individuals, Scott Hall, Sidney Powell, Kenneth Chase Brown, Jenna Ellis, they have decided that the fight is too great for them to bear. And you know what? Well, I can't blame them. They are weak willed individuals, weak moral conviction, and they should never have been placed in a circumstance like this. I would not ask a five foot three, 100 pound individual to try and carry two bodies out of a burning building. But in this instance, these are the people that Donald Trump chose. Now, as the as we we move, uh, move on from this into the 2024 election cycle, understand the ramifications of this. If you are a lawyer who seeks to defend your client, you know that you'll be facing prison for them as individuals. I've heard the argument that, Tim, you are wrong. How dare you say such a thing of these noble patriots? Someone said I was gaslighting and I'm like, that's not what gaslighting means. Here's the issue. These individuals not only are uh, 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 barred from certain activities, they won't be able to do any legal work in 2024. Thus, key players in the 2020 election lawsuits are out of the game. And the argument from many people was that they're trying to avoid bankruptcy. What's the point for themselves? Yes, that's it. Okay. here's what I see. A nation that's greatest fighters. I'm not really saying they are, but the argument was in 2020, they were they were fighting this good fight, would not be intimidated if this is the best they have to offer. And they cave so easily. Well, that's just it all for themselves to avoid bankruptcy. Is that all? You would sacrifice the core of this nation and your constitutional duties, drop to your knees and beg the court with tears. Don't make me do this. And there are people who say the court case was weak. That's what we're seeing. They didn't want to go to trial, so they got a free walk. Oh, is that the case? And if that was the case, then any one of these defendants could have smiled and said, I'll see you in court. And that's it. But instead, they chose not to. Why? So I hope. I hope as they throw themselves at the mercy of pure evil and corruption, they learn what it means to beg demons for mercy. And those demons smile and send a message to everyone else. For if the court decides that in the five years or in the case of Sidney Powell, six years, these individuals are in violation of their probation, they will be incarcerated. And you know what? For the rest of us, it's an important gesture. It would be a warning 
to anyone. If you betray this nation, if you betray your constitutional duties and you acquiesce to corruption, you will be given no special treatment. Your deal will not be adhered to and for it you will suffer. You know, it reminds me of the old stories of the jinns and the genies and the devils and Faustian bargains and things like this. Do you really believe that if you make a deal with the devil, the devil will actually abide? Well, of course not. For, for evil has no incentive to follow the terms of an agreement. You're playing a game with an individual who has explicitly told you they are going to cheat. Not only that, they're currently cheating in your face by trying to lock you up for simply being a lawyer. Now, let me stress again, any one of these individuals who actually committed a crime should go to jail. And I'm going to make sure I, I make this very, very clear. There's one of two scenarios. All of these individuals who pleaded guilty were actually doing their due diligence and thought they were fighting the good fight and did not intend to break the law. And thus they are being unjustly prosecuted. And for that is the assumption I operate under. However, I must make it clear. The alternative here is that Jenna Ellis, Kenneth Chase, Bro, Sidney Powell, Scott Hall all intentionally lied to manipulate our system to destroy this nation. And for this, I hope they go to prison. So understand what I'm saying. If Jenna Ellis actually did aid and abet false statements to try and subvert this nation, I am not satisfied with probation. That's a seditious conspiracy. And I hope she's found to be in violation and goes to prison. If it is not the case, and she is simply pleading down in fear, well, then she is sacrificing this country for herself, and she deserves prison. Perhaps there is something simple in all of this. Perhaps I am wrong in my assessment that these people were actually trying to uh, file a regis of grievances. Perhaps the reality is just oh so simple. These people are evil, evil people. And it's not the banality of evil, it is the malice, it is the malicious evil. That Sidney Powell knew she was lying, but wanted the grift. If that's the case, then I think she got off light. And I hope she goes to prison for trying to destroy this country. For if it is true that Donald Trump truly lost, then he should have lost. And these, these charges, these filings challenging the election, were it the case that these individuals knew they were lying, then they're getting off light. However, I think it's fair to say that there's probably a mixed bag. Some of these people, I believe, probably lied. And for that, they should go to jail. And they should not be given a light treatment. But I, I, I genuinely believe, based on what I've read and what occurred, Jenna Ellis, she did not do that much. The charges she was facing was RICO, which is just a broad sweeping charge, and solicitation of a public officer, a very, very minor charge. It appears that Jenna Ellis was simply acting as a lawyer for Donald Trump. Donald Trump says, I need a lawyer. Here's my argument. She says, I'll draft the argument for you. They said, now you're going to go to jail. And she goes, oh, please. Oh, me. Oh, my. But I will make, make sure it's very, very clear. Anyone who is lying or cheating to subvert an election should go to jail. I don't care which side you're on. And if these people are now admitting that's the case, then there is only one of two outcomes. They have betrayed Donald Trump and us, even though they were doing their constitutional duties, or they're actual evil liars who are trying to overthrow this country. You pick. Either way, they're really, really awful people. In the end, what we get, well, they're going to go after Donald Trump. Now, I think it's fair to say, it's funny, we're seeing like um, liberal commentators say things like, there are still Trump supporters who are going to believe, even after all these people admitted all this, that they're innocent, blah, blah, blah. It's like, come on. You don't get to argue that innocent people get locked up through the jury, the jury tax or through plea agreements, which are exploitative and corrupt, and then argue it does not apply here. We've known about the jury, t the trial tax, the jury tax, whatever, whatever you want to call it for a long time. That is, you could be accused of a crime for which you're innocent. This is a normal thing that happens in this country, and I think it should be illegal. I think it should be, uh, it should not be allowed. They say, you're accused of breaking and entering, and you go, I wasn't there. I have an, I have an alibi. Your alibi is no good. And if you go to trial, we're going to rip your alibi to shreds, and you are going to be found guilty, and you will get 10 years in prison. The person's like, oh man, what do I do? Hold on. We will give you a simple trespass charge. You'll serve three months, and that'll be the end of it. The argument from the court is that by pleading guilty, you're accepting responsibility for what you've done. But the reality is most people fearing long trials that will cost them too much money and destroy their lives and potentially still see them going to prison decide, I will give the court whatever they ask 
if they just go easy on me. And so often you'll get lawyers who say, look, it's going to cost you millions of dollars and you're likely going to be found guilty. And then you'll go away for five years. Just take the probation. And they say, OK. So they sell everybody else out. I'd like to believe. Uh, uh, how, how should I say this? I'm not a coward. I've just never been tested. I like to believe that if I would, I would pass. Uh, it's actually not true. I just love that line from Mighty Mighty Boston's. Um, I've been tested, but not to this degree. When I was facing uh, about a month to six months in jail on a false charge, I was adamant that I would go to trial. I wanted a jury trial. They would have to fight tooth and nail and they would have to dedicate all the energy they had if they wanted to go up against me and let that be known. And guess what? The judge dismissed the case. How about that? Because that's that that's 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 the world that I live in and clearly not the world that they live in. I don't know what life is outside of your convictions and the core of your being, for it is not a burnt cheesecake. Well, Bosque burnt cheesecake with with delicious cherries on top. It is not a chocolate lava cake with a scoop of organic vanilla ice cream. It's not scoring the jackpot in Vegas. All that life is, is what I believe. And I do not understand. I just cannot live in the mind of these people who would say I would sacrifice the core of my being for a little bit of comfort. That's just me. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I just I just it's not in my mind. If I truly believed something and I and I and I I I don't know what else I would do. I don't know what life is. I don't I don't get it. If someone came to me and said, renounce your faith in 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 in, in the founding fathers, in the ideals of this nation, in the values enshrined in our constitution, I'd say, no. And they would say, if you don't, we will destroy your life. What is life without the things that make me who I am? I don't know. What are, what are you arguing? That instead of eating a cheesecake tomorrow, I'll be eating prison food? I don't know the difference. I don't get it. Look, this is just so outside of my, my understanding and why I despise these people. I've eaten the finest meals. I have had Wagyu steak with lava salt sprinkled on top. And I don't care. It's nice. It's delicious. But it means so little in the long run. I could just as easily be, eat a box of mac and cheese from Walmart. I just don't get it. But there are people who value more sitting on their couch and watching sitcoms than the core of their being. Or perhaps there is no core of their being. Perhaps there is no world for which they seek. Perhaps there is nothing that makes them who they are. Perhaps the NPC meme is exactly what it is. Non-player characters, people with nothing that makes them who they are, except the desire to have a little more sweets, get a foot massage. I just don't understand. Perhaps the answer is this, that these people's the actions was unjust and they lied. And perhaps that's the reality. They really are evil people who lied to us and grifted off us to steal our money. I would say that's probably the assumption you, you should make. Or you can argue that they are sacrificing what they claimed were deeply held convictions for a little bit of comfort. I ask you this. It's a lesson I learned a long time ago in skateboarding. There's a famous pro skateboarder who said, before you're doing a death defying stunt, you ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen? And the reality is it's bad. It's bad. But you think about it. I would like to jump down this set of stairs. What's the worst that could happen? You break your legs, you slip, you fall, you hit your head. The worst possible thing in the world, in fact, is being scared and giving up. And the slim chance that you make a mistake and you get hurt, ah, the reality is you'll be out for a few weeks and you'll have a story to tell. The worst thing is that you never try and never experience that which life has to offer. I, I'm sorry, I'm just, I can only assume that these people are all just bad people. And so be it. Let them go to prison. That's why I said I hope they go to prison. 
Because again, I will stress either they really did this lying and trying to steal an election or they're cowards who would sacrifice the, the convictions of this nation for a little bit of comfort. Betraying Donald Trump. Pick one. Which one? Either way, they deserve to go to jail, I guess. It's strange to me. I, I don't know what there is in life and what you end up with. And I don't understand so many people who, uh, what, are your, what is your goal? What is your intention? Now, don't get me wrong. Look, some of these people have families that I get. But I really am just confused by those who would argue that their children should live in a world under the boot of corrupt evil. Or they're just genuinely evil people who would sacrifice this nation for themselves. It is what it is, I suppose. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.